Hello guys and welcome to the fantastic, fabulous and fantabulous session by Vedanta 9th and 10th English on your grade 10 chapter, Control and Coordination. My name is Pritesh. I'm your host, your dose and a proud master teacher from Vedanta, welcoming you to this session where we will today be discussing hormones in animals. Before beginning, let me get the pronunciation right for you guys. It is hormones, not hormones, not hormones. It is Hormones. The R goes silent, right? It is hormones. So we are on an English channel. So let's actually let's at least pronounce English correctly. So when I talk about control and coordination in humans, we have got two processes. One is fast and one is slow. The uh, you know the nervous system, the central, peripheral, and the autonomic that is a fast process. But the chemical control is the slow process. Chemical control is the process where we are dealing with hormones, when, where we are dealing with the endocrine system. Endocrine system is the system consisting your endocrine glands, starting from the hypothalamus, pineal, your th thyroid, parathyroid, your adrenal, pan uh, your adrenal gland, pancreas, then you have got the testes and the ovaries, right? So let's explore the endocrine system. Here you have got the hypothalamus or the pineal, the pineal gland, pituitary gland, pituitary gland also called as the master endocrine gland because it controls all the other endocrine glands. What do you mean by endocrine? The gland which does not have a duct, it does not have a tube, it is called as a ductless glands because it gives its secretion, because it gives its secretion directly into the blood, it gives its secretion directly into the blood. Then you have got the parathyroid and the thyroid gland, the adrenal glands, pancreas, ovaries and the testes. In today's session, we will be exploring the pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, ovary and testes. Ovaries in females, testes in males. Now when I start, when I talk about the, you know, uh, the endocrine system, the screen has got stuck. They also need some hormonal push. So endocrine versus exocrine. Endocrine glands are the glands as I told you without any duct. So when I talk about endocrine glands, these are your ductless glands. These are your ductless glands. Right? That is without a tube. Whereas exocrine glands are with the duct. Example of endocrine glands you already saw. Pituitary. Thyroid. Adrenal, etc. Exocrine glands will be your ear glands, your salivary glands, your uh, sweat glands, your oil glands, that is the sebaceous glands, right? Your pancreas. Now, let me tell you that pancreas is both an endocrine as well as an exocrine gland. Pancreas is both endocrine as well as exocrine. Okay? Remember this. Pancreas is both endocrine as well as exocrine. Now, when I talk about further your hormones, so what are hormones? How will you define hormones? They are chemical messengers of the body secreted in very minute quantity. Right? They are the chemical messengers secreted in very, very small quantities from endocrine glands. They directly act on the target organ which is away from the gland. They directly act on the target organ which is far away from the gland. Nervous system cannot act everywhere and that is why hormones assist the nervous system to maintain hemostasis in the body. Right? So you have got hormones like the growth hormone, you have got, uh, uh, you know, then you have got the happy hormones, you have got adrenaline and noradrenaline which are the stress hormones, you have got testosterone, you have got estrogen and progesterone. There are different kinds of hormones carrying out different functions in the body. Insulin is also a hormone. Now, when I talk about your endocrine, uh, your endocrine glands, we begin with the pituitary gland, also called as the master endocrine gland located at the base of the brain. It produces growth hormone which is responsible for the growth of the body. Growth hormone if secreted in excess causes gigantism. The great Khali, the wrestler, he is an example of gigantism. Gigantism makes the person grow to a giant more than 7 feet tall. It also causes uh, conditions like uh, not very, uh, very well-formed face and hands, 
right? So the person is extraordinarily tall and huge. Under secretion of growth hormone causes dwarfism, where the person does not grow more than four feet. There is also seen mental retardation in some cases. Thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is a hormone that goes and activates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxin. Thyroid stimulating hormone is something to stimulate the thyroid gland present in the throat. The follicle stimulating hormone goes and activates the ovaries to mature the follicle in the ovaries. Right? So that is your growth hormone TSH and FSH. Further information about the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, disorder of the growth hormone, gigantism in hypersecretion and dwarfism in hyposecretion. Thyroid gland, present in the throat. Thyroid gland is responsible for secreting thyroxine. Thyroxine is a hormone that uh, takes care of your metabolism. Hyposecretion or hypersecretion of uh, thyroxine causes simple goiter and exothalmic goiter. What are those conditions? We'll be understanding. But before that, how to make sure that all these hormones in the body are properly secreted? The only way out is proper balanced diet, right? Now, growth hormone is not in our control, but thyroxine is. Proper concentration of iodine in the diet keeps your thyroid gland healthy. Females are more prone to suffering from hypothyroidism where the thyroxine is not secreted properly. Uh, resulting in overweight, resulting in la laziness, lethargy, fatigue, puffy fingers, etc. But thyroxine is regulated by the thyroid stimulating hormone and by iodine in the diet. People living in hilly regions do not have iodine in the soil, which means their food also lacks iodine. And that is why people in the hilly regions are more prone to suffering from simple goiter, which happens because of hyposecretion of thyroxine. Goiter. Iodine is an essential part of the thyroxine hormone, thus a lot of salt we consume is fortified with iodine. Deficiency of iodine might cause a disease called goiter. Simple goiter is swelling of the neck where a person is suffering from hyposecretion of thyroxine. Similarly, hypersecretion of thyroxine causes bulging eyes, weak body, lean and thin person. That is called as exophthalmic goiter. Exophthalmic goiter. Then I talk about the adrenal glands. These glands are located on the top of the kidneys in the form of a cap. They secrete the stress or the emergency or the fight or flight hormone called adrenaline as well as noradrenaline. Adrenaline is also called as epinephrine and noradrenaline is also called as norepinephrine. Basically, they make the hulk out of you or the timid little kitten out of you. When you are super, super, super angry, when you feel that you can just go and break a building, that is when adrenaline is secreted. When a mad dog on the road runs behind you, what happens in your body is because of adrenaline. So when you are super excited, super stressed, super angry, wherever you are in excess of the normal, it is adrenaline that is working on you. Similarly, when you sit in a roller coaster, when you go through that excitement and thrill, it is adrenaline. Similarly, to calm you down, to bring you back to normal, it is noradrenaline that functions. So, adrenal glands located on the top of both the kidneys in the form of a cap. They prepare the body for emergency situation, also called as the stress or the fight or flight hormone. They are responsible for calmness as well. Also, there is a hormone called cortisol, which is also called as stress hormone. It is not good for your body and it is released only when you are going through a lot of tension or stress. Pancreas. As I told you, pancreas are both endocrine as well as exocrine glands. Let us see more information about it. They are located behind the stomach and they secrete a hormone called insulin. Insulin is responsible for converting your blood glucose to glucagon and glucagon to glucose whenever required. If insulin is not properly secreted in the body, it results in type 1 diabetes. Now diabetes is become as common as air today. Every other person is suffering through diabetes. That does, that does not mean that we also have to be a victim of it. Keeping your body healthy, stress-free, meditation, exercise is something that will keep you away from diabetes throughout life. Also, even if your parents have diabetes, it does not mean that you should have diabetes even though it is genetic, right? So diabetes does not only come with eating sugar. Diabetes comes with stress, with tension, with lack of exercise, with lethargy in the body. 
So if you do not want to become a part of the rat race and avoid yourself from getting this diabetes, then keep your body healthy, fit and fine. So when the blood sugar increases, insulin is secreted by the pancreas, it converts the glucose to glucagon. Similarly, when the blood sugar decreases, glucagon is secreted with, which again gives you sugar. So glucose is converted to glucagon and glucagon is converted to sugar with the help of insulin. Now we talk about testes. These are the organs present only in the males located outside the body in the scrotum. The reason for testes being located outside the body in the scrotum is to give a body temperature, to give a temperature 2 to 3 degrees less than the body temperature. The hormone that the testes secrete are is called testosterone. Testosterone is responsible for secondary sexual characters in males. We have learned in grade 8 chapter reaching the age of adolescence that how does uh, when a boy hits his puberty, he starts getting facial hair, chest hair, hair in the armpits, acne, the, uh, the chest becomes broad, the muscles become broad, he starts, uh, you know, secreting sperms. All of that happens because of secretion of testosterone which starts at puberty. Testosterone is secreted by the testes in the males. Then we have got ovaries. A pair of ovaries are present in the females in the lower abdominal region. The hormones that the ovaries secrete are estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is responsible for secondary sexual characters and progesterone is responsible for maintaining pregnancy when the woman is pregnant. So estrogen again controls the secondary sexual characters in females. Secondary sexual characters means again when the woman hits her puberty or when the girl hits her puberty, development of breast, fat deposition in the hip region, hair in the armpit region, hair in the pubic region, acne on the face and the back and very important the menstrual cycle. All of them are controlled by estrogen. Again look at the spelling, it is not E-S-T-R-O-G-E-N, it is O-E-S-T-R-O-G-E-N, right? And now we talk about diabetes. So. Diabetes is caused due to the deficiency of insulin secreted by pancreas which controls the blood sugar level. Patients have to administer injection of insulin which helps in regulating blood sugar level. Now there is a very very important give reason with this that why do we have to inject insulin? Why can't insulin just be taken orally? The reason is if insulin is taken orally then the person will end up digesting insulin and it will not function. Insulin does not have to be digested, but it has to go into the blood. And that is why insulin cannot be taken orally, but it has to be injected into the body. Now, in case of emergency, our body does the following. Adrenal gland secretes adrenaline, which acts on the heart and other tissues, causes faster heartbeat, more oxygen to the muscles, reduce blood supply to digestive system and skin, diversion of blood to skeletal muscles, increase in breathing rate. Basically, when we were discussing the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, whatever happens to your body during the sympathetic nervous system activation, that is what adrenaline does to your body. And whatever happens to the body during parasympathetic nervous system activation, that is what noradrenaline does to the body. Feedback mechanism. Feedback mechanism is, suppose your body is low on thyroxine. The pituitary gland will secrete thyroid stimulating hormone which will go and tell to the thyroid uh, gland that hey thyroid gland body is secreting less body is low on thyroxine what are you doing start secreting thyroxine and the thyroid gland will start secreting thyroxine now when the thyroxine level in the body is normal the uh, thyroid stimulating hormone will stop secreting and that is the feedback mechanism for example the positive feedback so initial stimulus response stimulus Response loop shuts off. Initial stimulus, response, stimulus, feedback cycle. Basically, thyroid stimulating hormone will be secreted by the pituitary gland to go and tell the thyroid gland to start secreting thyroxine. When thyroxine secretion becomes normal, when thyroxine level becomes normal, it will tell the TSH that now it's normal. The TSH will come back to the pituitary gland and say that everything is normal. So the pituitary gland will stop secreting TSH. And that is a feedback mechanism. Basically, it's like your mother telling you that go and fill the bottles and keep them in the fridge. But when the bottles are filled, you tell your mom it's done and your mom stops telling you, right? It's the same mechanism. Now, positive feedback. So see, for example, if 
brain stimulates pituitary gland to secrete oxytocin oxytocin goes to the uterus oxytocin stimulates uterine contraction and pushes the baby towards the cervix baby is towards the cervix as uh, cervix nerve impulse from cervix transmitted to the brain that now no need of oxytocin anymore right see body temperature exceeds 37 nerve cells in skin and brain temperature regulatory center in the brain that is hypothalamus sweat glands throughout the body you sweat body temperature comes back to normal this is how your body behaves it is so advanced and so systematic and so well organized now we have learned a lot today but why not test how much have we understood so there is a v quiz link given in the description of this particular video go take that v quiz and see how much have you understood right and with that i would like to give you a little information about the ntsc crash course which is way beyond this if you crack the ntsc you will not only make a name for yourself in your family in your neighborhood in your city in your state but in the entire country you'll get to shine across the country and not only shining you also get scholarship till the time you're completing your education you also get preference in government colleges you also get a first preference in government and private jobs so why not why not take this prestigious exam and make a better future for yourself so you can take the Vedanta NTSC crash course for grade 9 and 10 and when you're getting 10 sessions of mathematics 6 of social studies 10 of math and 4 of science from one of the best educators in the country that is Rinu Ma'am, Rajot sir and Sandeep sir right so guys the batches are starting from the 13th of June 2022 which have already started few days back but still it's not very late it's not too late you can still enroll using my coupon code PREPRO which will help you to get a bumper discount of 10% it's not less trust me 10% discount and you are getting to learn NTAC crash course from best teachers in the country don't lose this opportunity and also don't forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up Subscribe to Vedanta 9th and English channel. It's absolutely free of course. And do share this video with your friends and school WhatsApp groups. I'll be seeing you again really very soon. Till then, solve the V quiz. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.